Welcome to episode 9 of the Focus on First Year podcast. Down through the years, the main emphasis in university education has been knowledge acquisition and course content. With the publication of the Deering Report in the UK in 1997 and Ireland's acceptance of the Bologna process in 1999, the emphasis in curriculum design and development moved away from being content driven to being outcomes based. While knowledge acquisition of a subject or in a discipline continues to be an important aspect of higher education, attention is now given to the development and enhancement of students' competencies and capabilities. Big Zentang 2009 note that using the outcomes based approach to teaching, we are simply making as explicit as we can prior to teaching what our students will be able to do. Several factors influence student learning, such as prior experience, interest in the subject area, prior preparation and, of course, assessment. Many students are grade driven and to promote deep learning among your student group, it is wise not to dismiss or ignore students' grade ambitions, but to build on them. This can be achieved by curriculum design based on the completion of an easy analysis, identifying current and desired learning conditions, leading to the articulation of desirable learning outcomes, which demand student engagement and input. Moon 2002 defines learning outcomes as statements or indications of what students are expected to know, understand or be able to do at the end of a learning period and how the learning is to be demonstrated. Ruben and Martel 2009 classify learning outcomes as cognitive outcomes, skills outcomes and effective outcomes. Cognitive outcomes refer to the acquisition of knowledge, declarative and procedural, both in terms of the quantity and the type of knowledge learned. Skills-based outcomes, sometimes called behaviour outcomes, involve the demonstration of technical or motor skills that learners had not previously held or demonstrated. Effective outcomes refer to students' attitudes or motivation, which will include learner confidence and self-efficacy. Light et al. 2009 set out the key differences between aims, objectives and outcomes. Module aims are best thought of as general statements of educational intent, i.e. in terms of teaching, such as providing an introduction to accounting. Learning objectives are a more specific and concrete statement of what students are expected to learn. Students will study accounting principles. Learning outcomes are specific with observable and measurable statements of the learning achieved by students, i.e. students can prepare and analyse a firm's monthly accounts. Learning outcomes apply a standard of learning which is not under the control of the instructor, but which is subject to the whim of the learner. According to Moon 2002, module learning outcomes comprise three components. A. A verb that indicates what the learner is expected to be able to do at the end of a learning period. In the previous example, prepare and analyse. B. A word or words that indicate on what or with what the learner is acting. The firm's accounts. And C. A word or words that indicate the nature of the performance required as evidence that learning was achieved. Analyse the monthly accounts. Learning outcomes refer to general areas of learning rather than curriculum, science and applied science being exceptions. Consequently, some faculty encounter difficulties in framing them. Seeking answers to such questions as, who is my audience and what is their level of learning? What will students know or be able to do at the end of a module or session? And are completing statements in relation to outcomes cognitive, skills, affective, will facilitate the articulation of learning outcomes. When writing learning outcomes, the use of action verbs which focus on student performance, analyse, describe, evaluate, communicate, is recommended. It is good practice to refrain from using vague verbs like understand, learn, know as they fail to communicate to students that they are responsible for their learning and outcomes emerging are difficult to measure or test. Bloom's Taxonomy 1956, 
which sets out levels of learning. Biggs, 2003, Structure of the Observed Learning Outcomes, SOLO. Or the Dublin descriptors are useful when identifying desirable outcomes according to complexity and level. Learning outcomes must be observable and testable, and there should be no more than six per session or module. Apart from shaping module or session content and assessment, learning outcomes are useful for students as they inform them as to what is expected of them in terms of learning. Learning outcomes provide students with a sense of the purpose of the module and how it contributes to programme outcomes. In addition, student learning achievements in terms of skills enhancement, knowledge acquired, etc., are also evident from learning outcomes. By setting out module learning outcomes, the coordinator can focus on what he or she wants students to achieve in terms of knowledge and skills at the end of a module or session. They also inform external stakeholders, professional bodies, employers, as to the knowledge and skills attained by graduates of a particular programme. This episode focused on learning outcomes, their formulation, role and key characteristics. Do you refer regularly to module learning outcomes during your teaching period? If you refer to them only during the first session, it is likely they are poorly formulated or irrelevant. Curriculum is more than knowledge components. It embraces student engagement in programme offerings. I trust you are convinced that to articulate appropriate module session outcomes, it is essential to put students at the centre.